You probably think Miley Cyrus and David Bowie are worlds apart. What if I told you it's not so? That perhaps you suffer from generational blindness? Gen X's think Bowie is one of the biggest artists of the 20th century. If they know of Miley Cyrus, they probably think of Hannah Montana or the scantily dressed woman of the Wrecking Ball video. Gen Z's know Cyrus as a multi-talented artist who has achieved more in her 30 years of life than most people can achieve in a lifetime. If they are aware of Bowie, it's probably because they heard Life on Mars or Heroes in the soundtrack of some TV series. But these two share three surprising similarities. I want to keep this video short and to the point. Let's see if I manage to tell you all in the time it will take me to prepare my lunch. Challenge accepted. Both Bowie and Cyrus have transformed themselves through their music. A bit like these ingredients will be transforming themselves into a great sauce. They shed different music schemes while remaining credible and delivering several interesting albums. Bowie started off playing rock and roll and R&B. He then moved to blues and finally landed on psychedelic tinged pop for his first album. Listen to, say, the weird and childish The Laughing Gnome for an example of that. Then Bowie moved to the folkier rock of Space Oddities and his second album, keeping an eye to prog rock. And then the sky was the limit. The harder and more primal rock of the man who sold the world. The witty lunch pop of Hunky Dory. The glam proto-punk of Ziggy Stardust. The plastic soul of young Americans. The dark white funk of Station to Station. By the time Bowie was 30 in 1977, he was working in Berlin on a couple of albums that incorporated ambient music, electronica, pop, rock and other influences. Cyrus instead was initially rooted in country and pop. When Disney decided to release the soundtrack of the first Hannah Montana series, she had to move into teen idol pop territory. It took her a while to move away from the corporate image Disney had stuck on her. When she got rid of the Hannah Montana persona, she embraced funky rock pop with Party in the USA. Cyrus then progressed to the perhaps too sleek but danceable R&B sonorities of Can't Be Tamed and then to the raunchy hip-hop makeover of Bangers. Now 30 years old, she has also touched on country, rock, metal, experimental psychedelic rock and back to straight pop again. Whatever you think of their music, you have to admit that they couldn't stand still. Both liked their musical adventures. Both had fun with the possibilities that different genres offer them. In fact, do you remember the pictures I showed you during the introduction? Well, I played a trick on you, switching the phrases around. Miley commented on the good times and David promised not to get bored. But that's not all they had in common. Send the kids to bed and let's move to part two. Both Cyrus and Bowie liked the shock. They have offered the public a sexualized persona that escaped heterosexual expectations. Bowie appearing with a dress on the cover of his third British release in 1971 must have raised more than an eyebrow. In 1972, he came out as a homosexual and melody maker. In 1976, David declared to Playboy that in fact he was bisexual. He had used his sexuality to receive as much attention as possible. In 1983, he said to Rolling Stone that his public declarations on his sexuality had been the biggest mistake I ever made. I was always a closet heterosexual. I recall reading that interview years later. 
I felt let down, wondering if everything else he was saying was just a publicity stunt too. In 2002, David said his talking about sexuality had been a mistake. He got too much heat from the, and I quote, puritanical part of the audience. It had obscured the music. Cyrus caused a sensation when she appeared at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards. Twerking aside, it was her performance of Blurred Lines with Robin Thicke that raised the pulse. Too provocative, too suggestive of sexual acts. And then the video of Wrecking Ball came out. It was the proverbial cherry on the top. The whole bangers tour seemed designed to shock those same puritanical audiences Bowie was so wary about. On a more serious note, Cyrus is a self-declared pansexual. She came out when she was 14. This time it doesn't seem like a marketing ploy, but then again Miley has not been shy in using sex to make people talk about her. I mean, what kind of person would do that, right? Oh, sorry. But there's one more thing that David and Miley share. A long list of collaborations. By his 30th birthday, Bowie had collaborated with John Lennon, Mark Boland, Brian Eno, Iggy Pop, Lou Reed, Cher, Robert Fripp, and more. The list was long. Bowie also changed his bandmates when he wanted to try a new sound. Two examples, Mick Ronson helped innovate Bowie's music leading to the Ziggy Stardust era. Carlos Salomar propelled the thin white duke to the stratosphere. Cyrus loves her collaborations too. She worked with Lana Del Rey and Ariana Grande for the 2019 Charlie's Angels soundtrack. With Mark Ronson, Mark, not Mick, on his late night feeling single. And then Dua Lipa, Snoop Dogg, Father Williams, Mike Will Made It, and so on. Miley covered Bowie's Let's Dance with David Byrne. She did a Super Bowl pre-show with Billy Idol. She performed with Metallica for the Stern Show. It looks like Cyrus uses the covers to lure fans of those musicians and convince them to give her own music a chance. It's hard to find a clear parallel pattern between Bowie's and Cyrus's collaborations. The nature of such endeavors makes every collaboration different. On the other hand, being open to sharing the spotlight demonstrated that Bowie and Cyrus wanted to get out of their respective comfort zones. They are ready to experiment. This relentlessness is at the core of their musical journeys. Which leads us to the initial question. Is Miley Cyrus the new David Bowie? <laughs> We've covered three features that these two artists share. Can we draw some conclusions? As far as I'm concerned, Miley Cyrus can be considered the spiritual heir of David Bowie with a big proviso. This does not mean that their music is similar. It's like tomato sauce, just starting from the same ingredients doesn't give you the same result that I get. Sonically, Cyrus and Bowie are rather different, and if you are a fan of one of them, you might dislike the other. On the other hand, if you like Bowie's adventuring spirit, you should give Cyrus a chance, and the other way around too, naturally. What do you think? Tell me with a comment and let's get a conversation going to break the walls of our generational bubbles. This was Simon Mas and this is my lunch. See you soon for more music related content. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love!